Hey everybody, here's some critiques for the Grand Canyon workshop. This first one is by Dala. Uh, really nice work, Dala. Uh, beautiful colors in, um, in the rocks there, really saturated. Uh, get a real sense of the light, but the uh, warm light, because you've got that same warm light on the rocks and the foliage there on the left. Um, and some reflected light back into the shadows um, so it looks really good um, the background is a little problem there because you're let's look at it in black and white all of those in black and white actually okay so the problem with the background is that the lights are very very close to the same value as the darks okay now, if you look at the, let's just get a color here, All right? So, uh, not so much down here, but if you look at, I don't know, this light here is very, very similar to the dark in there, yeah? Very, very similar in value. Whereas if you look at the photograph, that is quite different from that, yeah? So I'm guilty of um, this mistake myself, um, although mine's a little better than yours in that there's a little more uh, separation between the light and the dark, or the dark. Okay, so <clears throat> just something to be aware of that um, whatever you're, whenever you're painting um, anything, the the value of the light needs to be lighter than the value of the dark. Okay. Um, if you get them too close together, then it doesn't read quite right. You don't get that three dimensionality of of form. So that's the only thing I wanted to say about that. Um, other than that, I like your brushwork. That's uh, some nice uh, bold brushwork there, which is good to see. And not, not being too finicky with details, so mission accomplished. Good stuff. Uh, let's see who's next. Elena. So yeah, very punchy color, very nice. Uh, big color contrast between the orange and the blue, which is good to see. Makes for a, a more dramatic painting. Um, so I wonder if you've done glazing in there. Yeah, looks like you've done some glazing, which is cool, over the light bits. So I guess this is with acrylics. I can't remember, sorry. Yeah. So this, the form of all of this stuff looks good. Light versus dark. Nice um, blockiness about it. That's all good. Uh, just the background. Um, it seems to be the trickiest part, doesn't it, the background? Um, I guess because the uh, shifts between the light and the dark are more subtle than what we're seeing in the foreground. And also the uh, complexity of shape in the background there uh, makes it quite tricky to simplify and, and paint in a simple way. So you could have, basically you could have done with more green in the lights in the background I mean it doesn't take a lot of green because you know it's way in the in the distance so uh, the greens not a punchy green like it is in the foreground but uh, you could definitely do with more green so I'll show you how that might look grab some green from the photo Yeah, 
So already that reads <clears throat> better as, you know, foliage than what you got there. No, that's a little too punchy for uh, the actual blue that you've got in there. So yeah. So if you look at the actual color of the green, let's look down there. Um, you see, it's actually very gray, very gray. And it's more of a blue gray than an actual green, right? Um, and as you go back into space, that yeah, it gets more and more blue. So let's look at this one back here. So lighter, obviously, and yeah, more and more blue. So, you know, it's far away from this green here. Compare that green to this. Quite amazing that it still looks like green, even though it's this amount of gray. And it's, you know, it's in the blue realm. Um, so that's all to do with what it's surrounded by, you know. It's because it's right next to this color here. It's surrounded by that blue color. And so this, yeah, that just appears to be greener than it actually is because of all the color that's surrounding it. Like if I surrounded um, that green in the background with this green from the foreground. You'll start to see that, oh, that actually does look gray. Not so green. It's just that it's surrounded by this stuff here that yeah makes the color appear the way it does so that's all i would recommend you do um, and just be a bit more aware of of, um, of making recognizable shapes so if you look in my one um, Okay, there's very distinct shapes in there that are definitely light shapes and then definitely dark shapes. Um, so you've just gone a little bit amorphous with yours. The, um, the shapes are not, you know, they're all a bit fuzzy on the edges and um, there's a lot of variety within here. So, yeah, just need some more work, some more thought. And I think you know that. Uh, let's see what else we got. So, Marie. Um, yeah, that's really nice, good simplification of the scene. You've, um, you've thought about the, the real basic shapes. Um, I mean, look at this shape here. Oops. How do I draw on that one? <clears throat> so you really simplified this shape here, which is cool. So a very sort of a, a graphic look to it because it is um, oversimplified. So you could, you know, um, more detail in there the more the more uh, smaller shapes you add into these big shapes the more realistic it's going to look and and the simpler you make these big shapes the more graphic and um, sort of simplified and unreal it's going to look uh, so it's up to you how far you want to take that 
Um, the uh, colors are really good. You've got nice little variations within these colors. So it's making these simple shapes a lot more interesting because you know they're not just a single color. That's great to see. And you've got a bit of warmth reflected in here, which is cool. Um, remember the oh, the drawing is a little bit off because you've gone a bit flat on these lines here, whereas if you look at the actual photograph, they're more like this. All right, shooting off to the horizon, they probably join up over there. Uh, so just a, just a little drawing issue there. Um, and that this convergence of lines over this big object like that is is a big part of what makes this whole thing look so large, right? Like a skyscraper. So you're missing out on that a bit by changing the drawing and making it more flat. So the background, you've gone very blue and simple, uh, with not a lot of uh, contrast between the lights and the darks. I mean, that's fine, because um, it just brings more attention to your foreground stuff. Um, but if you did want to bring it closer in line to the actual uh, photograph, then you'd want some uh, more contrast. So that would look something like, oops, not like that. So you'd want it lighter and grayer. See how that looks. Oops. Too light. So when you get into backgrounds, it's um, a little difference in value and color actually makes a big difference because you know that the further away this thing is, the closer your values get, right? The less contrast you have. Whereas you got this big contrast in the foreground that looks natural, you can't have that sort of contrast in the background. Alright, so... Color contrast too. So you can see, that, you know, adding that sort of color contrast and uh, value contrast um, allows you to add more interest to the background. So that's an option for you. But what you've done is very nice. Let's see, what's Jay done? So it's a different scene. Um, yeah, so you've really uh, simplified the shapes, which is great. Um, the colors are getting there pretty good. It's uh, clear that you're understanding that you need to make, you know, simplified dark shapes versus light shapes and enough contrast there to delineate you know which is light and which is dark and you've done that here as well and here that's good um, and this is a good color you've gotten here for the shade versus this color in the light although this could be a little lighter
this uh, orange color you've got here is just a bit too punchy if you compare it to the actual photo it looks like an orange that's in light right whereas this looks like an orange that's in the shade so just need some toning down maybe a few little striations in there a little bit of detail here and there Good job putting this blue in the background as opposed to that uh, white. Well, it's pretty much, yeah, it is white because this has been uh, over exposed by the camera up here. So good on you for realizing that and putting some more blue back in here. Uh, what you could have done is made this stuff here a little darker as well. If you're going to make the sky darker, then everything that's against the sky can be a little darker as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like, um, see this shape here, this, I think you've missed out on this nice, this is a nice shape back here, this, well, more importantly, this little slice of uh, light there, it's pretty cool, I think, um, that could have been utilized a bit better in your painting. It's just a nicer shape. That's all subjective, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think it's probably that little chink there, which is nice because it breaks up this big shape. And then this little rim lighting that you get up here, that's pretty cool. Something like that. Um, similarly, you've lost uh, some of that nice rim lighting on these shapes, so you could you know, rebuild those shapes a little bit. Okay, uh, what else? Yeah, this could be lighter. just to show it's more powerful, it's stronger light, right? a little uh, a little bit more shape to that would be good it's a little bit amorphous without shape and orange so you've got the here 
you got you know, green on green on green sort of so just think it would be good to have that bit more orange stuff back in there to have that color contrast This shape back here has got a little amorphous as well. As it's it's blockier in the actual scene. Yeah, and it might have gone too light here, yeah. If you look at the photo, there's um it's a slightly darker value in there and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same browny stuff it could be the green that you've you've used but anyway it's easier to just grab those colors and pop them in Oh, and this um, plant here, that looks like it's in the light, uh, whereas this one here is in the shade. So, that works better. Okay. So, those are the few changes I'd make there. Hope that helps. Eric, this is in uh, watercolor and gouache, and um, yeah, really nice job done with that. Look at all the detail in there. This is a lot of beautiful work in here and back in here. Really nicely done, and this idea of the uh, the mist or the cloud coming in here and um, pushing this section forward by the cloud going behind there. That's a really nice idea. Also uh, lends credence to the idea that this is a, a really massive uh, valley, right? Because, hey, it's got clouds in it. Um, so yeah, some really nice work in there. Mm, I like that you've darkened the sky over here and lightened it over here and Made some interesting little shapes in there, which is cool. Um, all adds to the sense of variety. You've got a lot of variety in here, which is good. Um, so it's it, you've done more than the job of uh, simplifying the um, the scene down into a two value statement. This is more of a um, more of a finished painting. Uh, with more values and color shifts in it. Well, that's fine. Um, so all this is looking good. What I would have liked to see, I think, is a little more... a um, little more reflected light in the, in the shadows. So I'll show you how that looks. So just means you get a little more color in there. Okay. Um, let's have some down here as well. And over here. So, what that helps do is give the sense of there being really strong light that is hitting 
these faces and bouncing off into these faces, right? And you can see that in the photo really clearly here. And just because it's lit up here, it's not so warm, but you're getting a sense of light bouncing around in there and over here as well. You can especially see that here, look at that. Okay, so because what you've, the colors that you've put in there are making it feel more like a overcast um, situation. And that's purely because this there's just more dark gray in here than there is actual color, right? So that's telling you that the light is not powerful enough to bounce back into here and that um, whatever light is up here is not um, is not getting in there either. Okay. Similarly, um, you've used a is this a Payne's Gray or something? Um, because when you, a lot of watercolorists use Payne's Gray as a go-to color for shadows, and what it tends to do is, uh, with beginners especially, is um, they'll overuse it, and it kind of infects all the colors in the painting and and makes the whole thing look gray. Uh, so I just suggest using that, you know, with caution and um, think about using other colors alongside it or instead of it say so add some blues and some mauves uh, into that as well because <clears throat> yeah it, it just gives all that gray is giving the appearance of a gray day despite you saying hey we do have blue sky um, so I can show you what that'll look like if you So the difference here, and a little darker. Okay, so already just by doing that, this section down here looks a little sunnier, and I'll show you before and after. All right, you've also got the wrong value down there. It's too light, and it's not reading as a shadow. So that really helps a lot. Then if I grab some of this, pop that in there. So it really, yeah, that blue and the distant shadows just really makes it look a lot more like sunny light, clear sunny light. Um, something you've also got happening is a little um, little confusion with this shape here. So let's see what we how it looks if we just knock that out a little bit and let's bring the cloud down a little lower. Hmm. There's a wee problem there with the um, this 
merging into the cloud so I sort of want to separate that and you could do that with color uh, not necessarily value just by putting in a, a warm there and then maybe make that a cooler Maybe a second little cloud way in the distance. Give even more sense of depth. Maybe that comes through here as well. That'd be nice. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe a softer finish there. Yeah. <clears throat> also, um, I know it doesn't show it in the photo, but my idea of having a shadow across the bottom of this, I think is a nice idea because Let's try that and I'll see what happens is that the eye gets driven away from this um, shadow space down here up into the light where the, there's more contrast, right? Because um, without it, you see there's all this contrast down here, which is the edge of the painting, and it's not, it's, it's drawing attention away from from this right which is really the the center of attention so yeah I kind of like that idea of having that soft shadow across the bottom mm, that's not so great there just helps direct the eye Anyway, that's the idea. So let's have a look at before and after there. Before, after, before, after. Okay. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, thanks, guys, for your paintings. And uh, I'll see you in the next critique. Happy painting. Mm -hmm.